Some be real. Be real. Okay, give me your best jingle. Jingle? <laughs> Jay. Give me your best. That's, that's all you. Well, okay, we're trying to find an intro. Do you like this? Welcome back, guys, to the Raves. <laughs> <laughs> you think of something, babe. I'm, I'm simple. I'm a simple man. Okay, what would you say? Welcome right. back to the Braves, guys. Here's our first no. ever video. Baby, Let's say it again. Welcome back to the Brains, guys. This, oh. Here's our very first video that we have yet to actually upload, but we're finally getting the chance to. So are we both gonna say it? We just need to like be us. <laughs> Personalities, they just have to warm up. Okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? Fine, but you I'm still gonna though, go right? with a jingle, so. All right. I'm. <laughs> Five, four, welcome. Welcome to the brains. That's not ourselves. Welcome to the brains. It's an intro. Exactly. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You're trying to say, no. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the brain show. Uh, brains. Uh, that's my personality. Maybe not yours, but and that's this, mine. This is talk, baby. This Fine. Is talk. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm getting my notes. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyways, welcome back to the brains, guys. This is our first video that we're going to be recording on this channel together. And it's been a long time coming. I feel like every single time we try to make a video with each other, there's like enemy attacks, some division, but that's the whole point of marriage is learning how to overcome these things through mm -hmm. prayer, just through, you know, just learning each other ultimately. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna be really talking about this video. But first and foremost, do you have anything to say, Jay? Welcome to the Raves. <laughs> Okay. I'm just gonna shit back. Sit I back like and chill. that. I like the two. Shit back. Shit back. Shit back. All right. I just wanted to say that. That's all. Let's go. Okay. All right. So, we wanted to make a video today and mm -hmm. just encouraging, but also sharing what we've been going through so far. In marriage. I know we're not even close to a year in. Mm -hmm. How many? Well, May, 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 June, July, August, September. Yeah, we're five months. About in. five months. Yeah. Wow. But. We've learned so much along the way. We're five months in. Five months we in. We got married back in May. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just learned so much along the way. And we're very grateful. Um, and I want to talk Well, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. She, she's always nervous around me. I don't know why. He gives me butterflies sometimes. Come on. Come on. Love you. Me too. Um, and so, yeah, so I. I told Andrew that I wanted to share more so on the fact that marriage isn't perfect, but we came to the conclusion that we want to talk about the truth about marriage. So, so the truth about marriage, guys. Can I if start? If I look at my phone, it's just notes. Everybody going into marriage, they have these expectations. Mm -hmm. They have these expectations about how it's going to turn out. What's the first 30 days going to be like? Where's the honeymoon going to be? You know, there's so many things, so many questions, yet so many answers that are answered yet. Because you have to actually go through the experience of marriage in order to get those answers answered. And when we finally got to these situations where those answers are finally answered, we realized that marriage isn't all it's cracked up to be. You know, during the honeymoon stage, we, the emotions were flying high, like, oh man, this is, you know, this is my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's she's beautiful. She's sexy. You know what I'm saying? But like, let's be honest. Like, we're talk we're gonna talk about the truth here. Every no, we get to have sex. Like, <laughs> it's the truth. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> you finally get to, you know, it's not everything, but it's a lot. It really is. But the, so the thing is with that, there were expectations of everything's gonna be perfect. You know, there wasn't going to be too many bad times or too mm -hmm. many challenging times to grow from. But as I've gotten older and wiser these past few months, because mm -hmm. I feel like marriage definitely ages you quickly. And you realize that the epitome of marriage is growing together in the midst mm -hmm. of hard times. There has been times where I want us to just stop. And, you know, there's certain situations where we doubt it. And it's really there's certain situations that happen where... I had to ask myself, why? Why am I in this situation? But then I had to go back on why I originally married this woman. And it was because she was 
a child of God. And I sincerely love that about her. And you really have to just look back on those times where you originally said those vows to one another and really just realize that you did make a promise to this woman, this person, and that your future spouse as well. You have to go back to those vows because you said those vows for a reason. And that's one of the things I've realized is when you say something, when you promise somebody something and you believe it in the moment, but yet a couple months afterwards you question it, that's really the enemy because as you get go together, as you get married to a person that is a believer in Christ, there's spiritual attacks that happen. And that's the division. Truly, we're not after one another. We're truly after the enemy, which is the devil. And mm -hmm. we have to pray against that rather than mm -hmm. causing distortion and you know animosity between her and I. Mm -hmm. So, so going back to what you said yeah. about, do you think a lot of the things that happened mm -hmm were stemmed from traumas and like the past. And do you think it's because they weren't dealt with? Mm -hmm. And so now in marriage, like, again, I always say like a, a, the person you marry doesn't fix you. They encourage you, they help bring you closer to Christ and mm -hmm. they support your dreams and your goals. Like that's very important, but they cannot fix you because the only person that can transform your life and change you into a new person is Christ. Mm -hmm. Do you think it is because of the traumas that weren't dealt with that you feel like that's why you were dealing with them absolutely because i as men we're we tend to just hold things together like mm -hmm. just you know hold internally all these things that we go through instead of expressing it to people mm -hmm. and when you're afraid of being totally open with somebody and just because personally i have dealt with trust issues in my past and just people doing me wrong so naturally, I wanted to just keep to myself and not able to express my true self and what I'm feeling in that exact moment. But what marriage taught me was it's okay to speak about things that are uncomfortable. Because, example, let's say you are not a if you, let's say you're afraid to bring these things to the light. And yes, to answer your question, they were traumas from the past that I've yet to confront. Mm -hmm. But with marriage, there's no other choice but to confront them because yeah. this person right next to me is one of the most closest people to me. Therefore, they're going to experience the exact same thing since yeah. we are one flesh. Yeah. So since that person is one flesh with you, they get to experience. And as a man, your wife, or you're really a reflection of me, mm -hmm. like how I'm feeling, just like you mentioned before. That is true. Yeah. And when the man is not on top of his game, when he's not sharp constantly, when he's not hitting the gym, when he's not leading by example, when he's dealing with these internal conflicts in his mind, mm -hmm. realizing that Christ <clears throat> has created him a new person, but yet still dealing with his past, there's a conflict type yeah. of thing right there. So yeah. what I've also realized is you have to really let go of the past of these situations and embrace the new you. Mm -hmm. And throughout marriage, it's your your new being, your new person that Christ created you to be will be exposed, will be totally introduced into your life. Yes, we are Christ's disciples, like we are his children. It doesn't mean that we don't go through things. The thing is, is that there's certain things that we have to give unto the Lord. Like for God, in order for God to continue to use us, because God can use anything we go through. Like if we give it to him, he, he takes that struggle or the pain of something that we're going through and he uses it for something greater, something better in our lives so that we know he's faithful to mm -hmm. us. That reminds me of Romans 8, 28. He says, how does it go? He works all things for oh. the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose amen there we go <laughs> so when a lot of the things that like also disclaimer that we share are things that like god is pruning and us, like he's working through us mm -hmm. i'm jumping ahead a little bit here when it comes to like like uh godly couples and couples that are not centered in christ and so mm -hmm traumas come from both like they're in both they're in godly couples and they're in ungodly mm -hmm. couples but the difference is that god is at the center of the godly couples and he helps mm -hmm. he helps to prune and sharpen and remove the very things in a person that's willingly giving it to the mm -hmm. lord so a lot of the things that like whether someone listening today like maybe this is your relationship right now maybe this is your marriage right mm -hmm. now like God can, re he can redeem whatever a person's going through, whether it stems from childhood or not, like he can redeem that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was seeing, you know, Andrew gave him to the Lord and vice versa. It's not just him. Like I was, he's like, Hey, we got to get better communication because like my communication wasn't the greatest. And I thought I was okay. So you guys reflect 
each other because you're both looking at Christ and Christ dwells in you both. So, Amen. All these things we go through as human beings, we can either do in our own power or partner with the Holy Spirit and have him do it, just like she mentioned. And I much rather do the latter. I much rather do the second portion because he's truly our comforter. He's truly our healer. He's truly our the person that we can go to to give all these cares and worries and anxieties and mm -hmm. all these things we can give him. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to heal it as long as we're able to express and be vulnerable with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because it all starts with vulnerability with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the most challenging things to, you know, to express are the ones that feel the most uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But the one you feel more uncomfortable, that's how you know you're growing. Mm -hmm. Is when you feel that discomfort and realizing that as I give this to the Lord, he's able to have me feel every single emotion, which is feeling every single emotion. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave, you, gave us every single emotion. So none of our emotions are inherently bad. For example, let's say you are an angry person. Anger is going to come up, but it's mm -hmm. like how you react to the situation. Will it be an anger or is it slow yeah. to speak? It's not, it's, it's not a bad thing to feel anger, but it's mm -hmm. a bad thing to express anger in a way that hurts the other person. Yeah. And that's <laughs> a huge lesson that I learned. Like you said, God created us with emotions. Yeah. Negative emotions, mm -hmm. clearly he doesn't like because it drifts us away from, from his heart, mm -hmm. from doing what is honorable in his sight. Yeah. And so... The emotions that are good, which I don't even call them emotions, are the fruit of the spirit. Mm. The nine fruits of the spirit. It's really his character. So until I learn that, yeah. until I realize, wait, I can walk in joy today. Mm. I can walk in peace, especially in our marriage. I can walk with, I can give him patience. But it requires a heart posture that God works in me. Because I could always look at Andrew and look at him like, you're always doing something wrong. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. But in reality, like we're called to serve each other. So instead of me looking at him and and his flaws or maybe something that he's going through personally, I can look to God and say, how can I respond better to him while he's going through this with the Lord? How mm -hmm. he's, you know, in his relationship with God because God works in all of us. So mm -hmm. powerfully so, said. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you pertaining to what you said, wow Lord, give me like memory because my memory is shot today. I saw so, also mentioned fellas, find a woman that prays with you and mm -hmm. is extremely understanding mm -hmm. because it's important because she's yeah. definitely have been has been extremely understanding for the things i've been through and you know now she's reaping the benefits of mm -hmm. a complete andrew and when a complete andrew comes to the table it's like wow and who <laughs> and christ completes us no because facts. a person can't do that yeah and i think like i can go on a whole tangent talking about like like people being in relationships out of their own selfishness but anyways that maybe that's for another video mm -hmm. but i wanted to ask you and sharing on how important do you think it is for a person to be single before marriage like this is so important guys ladies and gentlemen the singleness season is one of the most important things about your walk with christ because before anything else you must develop that relationship with god and how can you do that with with having all these distractions, with having your whole entire epitome of a human existence is for a relationship. That can't be it. Your purpose has yeah. to be for Christ. Yes. Amen. Point blank, period. Because if it's not with Christ, then how are you able to utilize that relationship with Christ and deepen it when you get into that relationship? Because we all know once you get in that relationship with that woman and if you're a female with that man, that's going to take precedence over the Lord if you're, that's not solidified. Yeah. It, if the Lord's relationship is not a priority in your life, that this relationship would have been doomed. Yeah. Because the Lord ultimately brought us together because mm -hmm. we're able to have this purpose that is similar, just really getting into the Word together and learning about Christ mm -hmm. collectively. Because if we didn't do that in the beginning of singleness season, we wouldn't be as thirsty, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be as on fire for the yeah. Lord as necessary mm -hmm. in order for Him to complete both of us so two imperfect people mm -hmm. can come together yeah. knowing that we just really enhance our lives rather than having somebody complete it because mm -hmm. Christ already completes our life guys mm -hmm. and if you're seeking something outside of Christ to complete you mm -hmm. it's just going to be a fleeting thing yeah. which is kind of funny how my video before today is talking about that it's called self-worth mm -hmm. so your self-worth must be based on what Christ calls you and nothing mm -hmm. else yeah. so no matter what that person says you are or not what that mm -hmm. doesn't really matter the opinions yeah. of others never matter and that's what you learn in the singleness season is the opinions of what Christ tells you you are 
surpasses anything that you will ever believe in this world. Yeah. Because they're it's forever. Yeah. And I also want to like preface too, like going into Matthew six thirty three, where it talks about seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and like all these things will be added unto you. I think it's so important. Like it took for me to get to a place in my singleness season that I would be okay if it was just me and God. And I think oftentimes people make marriage this idol or they put it like in front of the Lord, like you mentioned. And I think you have to get to a place where you're completely okay with whether it happens or not. And the thing is that God knows our desire. So if you desire marriage, it's because he placed it in your spirit. That means that he has a plan for you with that, but it's not in our own timing. And like, like for me, it took for me to really like get my eyes off of what I wanted, what Jeanette wanted, and to focus on what God wanted me to do. And it wasn't until I like surrendered myself, until I surrendered the timing, mm -hmm. until I surrendered everything that I tied to marriage and like even not just marriage, but other things like, you know, like just certain other things I prayed about. It took for me to actually just focus on God because the thing is, is that the minute we put anything you know, ahead of God, or we put it in his placement, then people start to worship that thing. And their whole life, like Andrew said, becomes that. And so at the very end of the day, it's just like, we have to get to a place as like God's children, as Christians, as believers, disciples, that we are okay with where we at. We are content exactly where we're at in our seasons. Mm -hmm. Like, when we were going through certain things in the beginning of our marriage, it wasn't really in the beginning, it was like, on the way you know which wasn't too long ago we were going through a really rocky time and it was very like it was unsure or should i say it was very it was just hard mm -hmm. and we both realized that it was much better and it has been much better that we've gone through the things that we've gone through and we'll share a testimony in the future but like that we've gone through certain things early on and not later on because there's a purpose that God will use it for. There's something he wants to do with that. Do you agree? And this is a lot of the things that we've gone through. Absolutely. And it's for this exact moment because mm -hmm. we're able to actually go back on the things that we've been through and tell people how we overcame it through Christ. Cause yeah. you could see like it all glorifies him in the ends. Mm -hmm. It may be painful in the moment, which it is yeah. extremely painful. Like mm -hmm. our, our communication skills were definitely subpar at best, but we've learned how to, coexist with one another and by the grace of god like we're able to <laughs> speak to one another without any conflict yeah so but i will say this like first of all what's sub what'd you say subpar below average okay i was like that is a fancy word so you know but... i gotta teach your vocabulary too guys it's all good it's all good so it's just like one of those things that we when you fantasize about marriage and you mm -hmm. watch movies and you read books and you have this idea of marriage but until you're in it like it's it's not meant to be like a walk in the park like you're there's two people coming from two different backgrounds and yes you both love christ but guess who hates marriage the enemy hates marriage mm -hmm. and we had to realize a lot of the things that were happening God allowed them to happen so we could grow from it and stretch as his children from it but at the same time um I also believe that like the enemy comes to attack and mm -hmm. if your house isn't guarded up and your house isn't on a strong foundation and your house isn't secured and your house isn't you know if you're not living on on Jesus principles and his God's word really then that foundation is going to sink. And God tells us that in his word. And so um, it doesn't mean that we weren't doing that, is that we were navigating, like, how do we do this thing, you mm -hmm. know? But thank the Lord for his grace. Like, mm -hmm. And I look at, like, certain marriages today, and we have divorces on both sides of our family, like, that we, we've we known that or we have have heard of that. Mm -hmm. Like, so the enemy will try and use the past <clears throat> to try to distort your future. But right. if you can stand in your faith in God and say, no, not my house, not my marriage, and you're not going to have my husband, you're not going to have my future children, then God is at the center. He's going to come in and he's going to redeem that home. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's been doing with us. The reason I did this, guys, is because <clears throat> from the neck on up, that's the enemy's battlefield. Yeah. Whenever you get darts thrown at you, like constant negative negativity. Yeah. Like I had so many negative thoughts towards her. Like, is she my mm -hmm. wife? 
like how to question constantly question it yeah but looking at the thought realizing where did this or like where did this come from what's the origin of this thought mm -hmm. i trace it back and there's really no ending it's just yeah. like why did i have these thoughts you know what i'm saying yeah. so you just look, he's dirty he's dirty he's 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 a liar he's, is what he yeah. is <laughs> yeah <laughs> so mm -hmm. you look at what christ says she is mm -hmm. who he says i am and we're both children of yeah. god so it was definitely a long time coming but ultimately with all these doubts and everything you just have to stay prayed up constantly and yeah. go back to the word and just ask the lord to reveal their true intentions and it'll yeah. continue to reveal yeah absolutely mm -hmm. i agree yeah. it's like putting god in in whether you're in the dating phase and you're like god is this my spouse like that's totally normal but invite god into every conversation invite mm -hmm. god into those relationships because he wants to be first in everything. That's all God wants is that he's the God of our lives. And so we have to put him at the center mm -hmm. of everything. We did that. We fasted in the beginning too. And like, were we dating? I would say we're talking. We were, we were talking yeah. a little bit. But we were we definitely fasted and made sure that the Lord was in this exact moment. And just mm -hmm. to make sure that like he yeah. ordained this everything. Because yeah. we fasted, fasted multiple times yeah. for like three to five days. Yeah. And just to tell the Lord... Please yeah. take this away if it's not from you, because yeah. I want your perfect will. Yeah. And that's how everybody should approach these things, because mm -hmm. if it's not your person, then it's not your person. You can just walk away and move on, because yeah. it's, if it's not going to be a good life if it's the wrong person for you. So you just have that to always make sure that the Lord removes the people that aren't meant for you. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And also when we fasted, we mm -hmm. fasted from talking to each other. Yeah. We didn't just do a fast together. Like we did it, we partook in it, but... It wasn't where, like, okay, we're going to fast food together. It was more like, no, we're not going to talk for, what, a week? And each time we did that, we yeah. were closer, you know? <clears throat> and many times, you know, when you pr you pray she like, I... She missed me a little bit. <laughs> I did miss you. Well, of course you did. I always did. Of course. Babe. Come on, baby. Did you miss me? Come on, of course I did. Come on. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's move on to one more. Or should we have a part two. Ooh, I like that one. Come. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we, put you guys on edge. All yeah. Right. There's so many things that we can just talk about, mm -hmm. like from sex to like the truth about sex, like, you know, our experiences, not yeah, I mean, servant, could. um, ministry together, purpose in God together. So yeah. yeah. So this will be our part one mm -hmm. series on the truth about marriage. So well, I just wanna leave you guys all with this. The summary in this whole entire video is when times get tough, lean into the Lord. Don't lean into your spouse in order to make her or him a therapist. Of course, hear them out, you know what I'm saying? But like, give all your worries, give everything to the Lord, mm -hmm. number one. Because you want them to look at you in a respectful and loving way. Mm -hmm. And when you cast all your worries on your partner, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be good, ultimately. So make sure you utilize the Lord's power in order to empower yourself and use the Holy Spirit in order to overcome these things. Yeah. Number two, when things get tough, don't automatically leave as well. Stick with it because each marriage goes through its own set of troubles and trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. And it happens in the first year of marriage usually. Yeah. So tackle them, you know, handle the business, get therapy if needed, but also never just give up because what's on the other side of it is just imagine like a relationship, you know, of, of course, conflict is normal, but just imagine one that is, you're able to communicate, you're able to just run on all cylinders all together and focus on the Lord's purpose for is each of us individually. So, and together, number two, yeah, never just go away and up and run. Number three, I would definitely say, make sure you're equally yoked with that person. Make sure yeah. you have same, similar visions, similar purposes. Make sure they have the same values as you. Make they sure pray. You, Pray. So important. Equally yoked. Just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And mainly just make sure that this is your person by the fruits that they portray. And make sure they yeah. back up their words with their actions. And because actions over and actions are super, super important. So mm -hmm. yeah, do you have anything else to say, baby? Um, I agree with all of those. There's just so much that, you know, I wish I would have known alone a few years back. Mm -hmm of what to look for. And I think because it's not talked about, like qualities aren't talked about enough in the Christian community, I think it's important that, you know, we have people out there like 
us and there's so many other teachers leaders and pastors and wise counsel that will share in that it's just everything he said is so important like the qualities of a kingdom spouse because that's really what it is like i don't i would have never settled for just anybody i know you wouldn't have either like you want someone that loves god loves the word they're not perfect but they know who their savior is being with someone that truly puts God first is such a great start. Mm -hmm. Like that, if that person is willing to give up that relationship, they're willing to give up whatever for the sake of their relationship with Christ so that, you know, they're in right standing, yeah. that's a good sign. So nice. I can't, like, you guys have also should go follow Andrew's YouTube channel, which he just started. I'm so proud of him. Let's go. Um, because he's gonna give a lot of insight to men as well, like mm -hmm. his brotherhood, just like, what else, babe? Pretty much can benefit from. just learning more about Christ and the character about God so you can embody that as a man. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I am coaching men, mm -hmm. but the thing is I want to have a platform for every single person that can gain yeah. value from it. So yeah. it's mainly based on just your self-worth with Christ and just like all these little nuggets mm -hmm. that the Lord has show, shown me. I'm going to correlate it back to scripture and just everything I've learned and of course fitness as well. So mm -hmm. it's going to be like an overall betterment of your individual person so you can get farther with christ yeah. as you become the best version of yourself yeah because we're always growing we never stop growing with the lord yeah. but yeah i don't really have anything else to add other than if you guys like these videos don't forget to like and then subscribe to our couples channel we're also going to do vlogs we're not just gonna have sit down videos we're gonna do some fun videos on mm -hmm. this channel um and if you guys would like to see specific videos comment down below stay prayed up and blessed up guys let's go Peace.